Hi, I'm Daya, and I'm from Amazon's Bosch, and I'm sitting here with Elias for the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to the party, pal. You're my boy, bro. Yo, I did it. I did it. A podcast with interviews of amazing guests from the world of pop culture. Oh, yeah. TV. Nice. Movies. Oh, I love the movies. Comedy and more from deep inside the Man Cave. Your host, Elias. Daya, welcome to the cave. Thank you for having me. It's how, so great to be here. How are you? What's new with you? Well, I'm um, quarantining. Right. How's <laughs> that? Uh, indoors. How, how's that treating you? <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> I'm having a blast. No, I'm trying to make the most of it. It is. It's hard. It's rough, and I think it's rough for everybody. But um, you know, I'm getting to discover things that I don't normally do. I'm making a lot of bread. And I'm uh, gardening. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, it's funny you mentioned bread because yeah. I have a couple guys I work with, and they're like, "Oh yeah, like we're sitting at home working from home and making bread." I'm like, "I guess it's the new thing. Everybody's making bread." Everyone is making bread because it's just like because bread goes so fast, you don't have to go to the store every time, and then you can do the sourdough thing. It's actually it's kind of soothing, actually. <laughs> there you go. What kind of gardening are you doing? <laughs> I'm uh, so I'm I'm pl- my gardening's horrible. Like I, I I do not have a green thumb. It's terrible, and no one should ever take gardening skills from me. But I'm trying really hard to garden vegetables because you know I think we all thought this was going to be like the end of the world, and we all need to like grow our own food. Right. I think I ordered solar ties. <laughs> I'm getting solar. I mean, I'm going all out. But yeah, uh, my gardening is pretty bad. But I'm trying to garden. I'm trying to have lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get lettuce. Yeah, you got to keep yourself busy. There's nothing else to do. Right now, everything's frozen for you guys out there. I know, man. It's like, I mean, what? It, it's really tough because, I mean, you want – the other thing about it is you want to be safe, right? You don't want to get sick. Right. So, you know, you want to do it. You just – it's just after a while, you go stir crazy. I'm also – I'm dancing a lot, though. I mean, that helps. Dancing. I turn on – you have all these online DJs now. Have you been hearing them? No. You guys know uh, – DJ D nice. He's like this guy from, he, he, he used to spin back in the day and he's from New York and he's in LA now and he's been doing these quarantine, um, DJ sets and you can just dance to it and he does it for hours. It's, it's kind of cool. It's a way to connect people. That's you know, in, that's interesting. And you have two kids too, right? Correct. Right. I do. How old I know are they? I have three too. Hold on. Sorry, three kids. Three kids. How am I forgetting my other child? Three kids. <laughs> so h- h- how old are they? <laughs> well, I have um, twin boys that are seven years old, and I have okay. a 10-year-old daughter. So, okay. Yeah, very. So, so they're independent. If they're, you know, if they got to do their own thing, you know, they don't always have to be, like, around you 24-7. Well, they do. They like to be around me 24-7. I, <laughs> I find it hard to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Um so I try to get, I like try to speak away, but it's hard when you're in a house and right, you can't go right. anywhere. I have two young kids. I have a five-year-old daughter and a two-year-old son and trying to work from home. You know, my five-year-old, you know, she could do her thing, but my two-year-old is like the total opposite. He's got to be around. He's got to see what you're doing and just does not leave you alone. Oh man, two, that is, that is a tough age. The toddler age is impossible. Right. You can't, you can't, they, they need, you need to be, they're still in the phase that you have to be in their eyesight at <laughs> all times. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean, you've, you've been busy the last few years. You've done a, when I was doing some research, a various TV show appearances and you recently just started on, well, you re, you came back on Amazon's Bosch and we'll talk about that. But uh, for the listeners real quick, uh, where are you originally from? So I, I grew up in Oakland, California, so the Bay Area, and then came to L.A. and went to UCLA um, right after high school. So I've been in L.A. since high school, but I spent my formative years, like, right in the heart of Oakland. Oh, wow. How long did you live in Oakland for? So that was from the age of two until 17, and uh, yeah, it was. it's a tough city. It's not the city it is now. You know, now it's all, you know, been... It's changed. It's all beautiful. When I was growing up, it was it was a little rough. Yeah. So you moved out to L.A. at 17? Yep, 17. Went to wow. UCLA. I was a theater major, a dance major. And I, uh, yeah, I went to school. And then I took a sabbatical for a little bit. and went to New York to dance in New York and act in New York. I was, you know, I was, I was doing the whole artist life. I was, yeah. uh, you know, trying to go back and forth and find what, 
where I, I needed to stick. Cause I love theater. You know, theater is my heart, and that's what I come from. I grew up doing theater since the, since 11 years old. But UCLA, I, you know, I loved going to college, and I wanted to get that education. So it was, I was very torn. I, I, I wanted to go out into the world and just perform, but I knew that I really wanted to get my degree. Mm. So I came back to UCLA and finished, and then I went out and, and started working professionally. Oh, wow. So you mentioned you did theater at 11 years old. Like, so what, how old were you when you, like, kind of had an idea that this is what you wanted to get into? Yeah, it was pretty much right then. I was um, turning 11, and my mom took me to a play, a youth theater performance of Guys and Dolls, and literally was hooked the second I saw it. I saw it, and I said, that's what I want to do. I just knew, and it never – it's one of those weird things where I never changed, and it never turned into anything else. I just knew it, and then I pursued it from that point on, and I did children's theater, and then I did it professionally later. Yeah, it was just always been my love. So you mentioned dancing. Was it like more like did you think you wanted to go like towards the dancing part of the entertainment industry or you you knew that you wanted to get into the acting? Early on I was I was more torn, you know, because I was dancing a lot. Yeah. I was dancing probably more than I was acting. I was dancing professionally. I was doing I was a dance major first at UCLA and I was kind of doing the LA dance yeah. scene back then, you know, videos and all of that. And um and then I went to New York and I danced at Alvin Ailey. So I was on, I was in, which is a big um, dance company, a majorly prestigious one out there, which was so tough. And being in New York and being in the like heart of the dance world, that's the thing that made me go, I love the dance, but that's not the thing for me. That's not the, that's not it ultimately. I think that's what made me make the decision. I'm going back to UCLA and I'm going to change my major to acting and I'm going to just pursue acting and I'm just going to dance for the love of it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you, want, you want to go with what you have a passion for. Exactly. And that's hard. To, you know, it's hard because art form, you know, I have a passion for both. But I knew I had to make the decision of what I wanted to pursue as a career. Yeah. And dancers, you know, it's like I love dancing, but it's hard as a career. It's really tough as a career. So like when you told like your family, like this is what you wanted to do, like you wanted to get into the ent- entertainment industry. Like how what was their reaction? Well, you know, they have always been supportive. So I've been lucky in that way because I know a lot of people whose parents aren't. And um, my dad was the kind of person who just said, you want to do that, you put 150% in it and you never give up. Mm. That was his message to me, just never give up. And that I really took that to heart. And I think for any actors out there, the most important thing is not giving up because it's really just you have the stomach for it. Yeah. I mean, you can, you know what I mean? Like, this is the kind of business, eventually, it's going to hit. It's just a matter of if you have the stomach to last till it does. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. Have you ever been to that part where you're like, am I sure? Like, are you sure this is what, you, what do you want to keep doing? Have you ever been in there before? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, I definitely... You, I mean, there's so many times, there's so many letdowns and so many ups and downs. You definitely question it. I've, I've, I've absolutely, I've questioned whether this is going to ever happen. What I didn't question was the giving up part. So mm-hmm. I kind of had resigned myself to feeling like I'm just a lifer in this. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, I literally looked at it like that. I didn't have a plan B. I said to myself, it's almost like this is just, this is it. I just hope to God, it hits at some point because it was hard right after college. And then you start getting a few jobs and you start getting on set and, and then you and then you get more confidence and then it starts to happen and you just, you know, keep it just keeps growing and, and you just got to stick with it mm-hmm. and keep and also and keep studying. That was a big thing for me. And I always tell people, like, don't just, you know, do it and kind of like be a dilettante about it. I feel like you have to go to class. You have to study like you would be studying to be a lawyer or a doctor. You have to study. Mm. You got to work for it. You know what I mean? So, like, how would you describe, like, your experiences with, like, acting lessons that you took? Um, I I studied with the same person, uh, Stuart Rogers, in L.A. for, like, the entire time since I graduated from college. So I went directly to him, and he's been my mentor. It's, um, it's a small uh, studio in North Hollywood, and he's just he's just the guy I clicked with. I love his teaching. So he's kind of like the workout I do. So, for example, between Bosch, if I know I'm about to start shooting, I'll go to class just to kind of, you know, work out almost, like try some characters that I haven't done, study. Yeah. I always study. You know what I mean? I always believe in studying. I don't ever think you get past the point of studying, personally. That At least if you find the right 
class or the right teacher. Yeah. Um, I take breaks, but I'm all, I always go back. It's like a tune-up. You have to go do it once in a while. I've had a lot of guests that say, like, if I don't work for, like, two, three months, I got to go back to a few acting classes just to keep it going. Oh, yeah, exactly. You get rusty. It's, it's 100% a muscle. Like, you can get rusty. If you are not on set or you're not doing it, You'll your memorization skills, your ability to, like, just flow, yeah, you, you, you have to stay up on it. So I mentioned earlier, you know, you've done a few appearances like before when you first started out, like Major Crimes, Castle, uh, Two and a Half Men, uh, even okay. Dexter. What was your favorite from like one of those shows, even a show that I didn't mention? Um, I would say so in terms of just the character, like the crazy outlandishness of a character was Castle. I played a, teleno- a Colombian telenovela star on Castle and had an accent and spoke Spanish and I don't speak Spanish fluently, but I had to learn like two pages of Spanish really? in like two or three days. Wow. And that was interesting. Yes, literally. I Because when they hired me, I, I told them too, I said, I speak, you know, um, but I'm not fluent. That's the only thing. I grew up on mix, so I, I'm not fluent. And yeah. they're like, fine, no big deal. It's just a little bit. They were like, it's just a few lines. I get the script and it's like two pages <laughs> and I, I already had the part. So I, I was like, okay, how, okay, I had to like, and I had to do it as a, as a telenovela star. It yeah. was, and it was a hilarious character and I had to do her justice. So mm. I'm telling you, I worked my butt off. I worked like 12 hours with a coach and like, I learned that Spanish and I have an ear for it. You know what I mean? But yeah, it was, that was challenging, but that was super fun. You can watch it. It's hilarious. Now, I, and I like what I did. You know, I like it now. Hmm. So I would say that. And then Bosch is my favorite on-set experience in terms of just the way the set is run, the people, the, the vibe on the set. It's just amazing. Hmm. So, yeah, Bosch, like, what uh, when you first heard about the project, like, uh, what drew you in? You started, you came in in season two, am I right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so, like, what drew you to the project? When I first read the um, audition side, so initially I just read those, and I always say, and I think most actors will agree with this, you once you've been doing this for long enough, you can read just the scenes and you can kind of get a feeling if it's a project that you're, that yeah. you are excited about. You can just tell by the writing, you know what I mean, immediately. You can see. And then the character breakdown and who she was was super intriguing. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then I got Michael Connolly's book and I checked out the first book and I was like, oh, this is really good. His, his books are so, you know, it just sucks you right into the world. It takes place in L.A. I mean, it's noir. It's, it, it immediately got me. And then the character is so badass, you know. So I was like, oh, I want to play her. And then yeah. I found out she was, and I told this to somebody else, she's a man in the book. But yeah, she's a woman. That. They wrote her. Yeah, so I was like, oh, come on. You know, I'm going to get to play this woman character that was written as a man. Oh, that's going to be awesome. I, I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah. Like, so how would you describe your character? So she, Jen Kowski, she's a, basically, I don't know, can I swear on this? Because she's a boss bitch. <laughs> can I say yeah, that? yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> she, is, she is, she is, that's what I like about her. She gets what she wants. She wants to win. She goes by any means necessary to win. She's super ambitious, super strategic. Um, and that's different than me. You know, it's like that's how I want to be on a certain level. But, you know, I'm a little more nice, I guess. And she doesn't care about niceties. She doesn't do what she has to do. Yeah. And it's fun to play somebody who's that, you know, open and goes for it. Yeah. So, like, so when you got the role, like, what, like you said you read the books and everything, and your character – is you know is a man in the books like so how like how did you prepare for the role like what kind of re- did you do any other type of research to play this character yeah i did two kinds of research the first one was i just had to get into the mindset of a person like that because again like i said i don't really think that way i'm yeah. not manipulative you know so i had to kind of just sit in the mind of how do i do that and i literally i'm i'm into politics anyway so what i did was i just started watching um, I watched all the politics, you know, different shows that I or, already watched, like press conferences and, and just the news. But I started paying attention more so 
to the person behind the scenes, the person running the campaign, the person who was like putting it together, who speak. I just started watching those people. And it was interesting because you could learn a lot. And sometimes they're not even speaking, but there's so much going on with body language. Yeah. Like one day when you watch, I'm telling you, watch a press conference and watch the people who are watching the president or watching the, or whoever the politician is. It's hilarious. You will, you will, you will see so much going on in that person's face. You're like, oh, they have a whole, you know what I mean? They try to have the poker face, yeah. but you can tell they're attached to what the person's saying because they want, they want that person to do well or win or whatever so yeah i I did stuff like that and and just tried to get into the world Mm. of of this woman so like did you find like any challenges playing this character at all do you think yeah i'd say the biggest challenge was um figuring out humanizing her so that she wasn't just a stereotype of this kind of political animal yeah you know i mean she's still a human being and she still has vulnerabilities and and wants and needs and she's not just one level because you can easily fall into a trap when you play those kind of strong characters as an actor it's super trappy you can start playing it just one note yeah. you know you're just this like one way and a lot of a lot of more like probably you know that's a big early acting trap um, that I try to avoid by just making it more three-dimensional, you know, finding out all the different layers. Mm. So and it's not hard to do sometimes on a TV show that you're just kind of sometimes coming in for just a scene or two, like you can overthink it. But I feel like if you've done that work, yeah. uh, figuring, uh, flushing it out, flushing out the different levels, then you can show up and it doesn't matter if the, the scene is short or long. I, I feel like it comes across. You know, that's the thing that makes an actor different than just like, oh, they're good. Yeah. yeah. At least that's what I try. I'm not, I'm trying for that. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. definitely. So like, say, say you were in a party and you met this, this person was real and you started talking to her, like, would you be friends with her? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, me be friends with her. I would probably be friends with her, but I would be, uh, sus- I would have my guard up. Cause I would, <laughs> I'm pretty, you know, I would have my guard up with her. I'd be like, nah, I'm perceptive. I can tell that she's like, has an angle. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know those people? You That's meet, right. Who you like them and they're cool, but they have angles. Yeah, they're always up to something. And you're like, totally. And you don't totally trust them. You want to kick it and you want to be just cool with them, but there's a party that's like, mm, you're trying to get something, <laughs> and you just know, you just yeah. know that that's the kind of person she is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's uh, what do you think has been like your favorite scene that your character was in? Um, I would say it was from this season. I had two of them that I really enjoyed working with Mimi Rogers. She plays um, Honey Chandler in the show and she is a vet. You know, she's like an old school veteran actress that is just so great and and fun to work with. Um, I always work with Lance Irving. Like he, Lance Reddick, sorry, Lance Reddick, who plays Irving. Um, And he and I, uh, since season two, have worked together and he's, he, I love him. But this was different, this, Time because I got to finally work with a woman. I've I've done all my scenes with men up since season two. Mm. So this was a change in that they introduced our characters to each other. And the two of us both while we were shooting said to each other, This is great. We like working. We want more of these scenes. We were telling the writers, Hey, write more of these things. This is good. Like we we she and I clicked. So yeah, that's I would awesome. say that was the fun. I think that's episode I don't remember which other. I think it's like episode five or something. And, now, and they just recently announced that one more season and that's it, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Season seven. Have you heard season anything? Season seven. Yeah. Have, have you heard anything about your character returning for the next season? They never tell us what exactly is going to happen until around July, August. So okay. I won't know. Yeah. You know, they're in the writer's room right now. I They left it on a cliffhanger, though. So yeah. I have a. I have a pretty good feeling we'll find out, but you know, everyone's left in the dark. It's that's the hard part about acting. Like I said, you have to have the stomach for it because yeah. you know, a lot of these shows you can get killed off and you won't know until you read the script. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so. Yeah, you don't know, you don't have a job. Yeah. You'll, find, you'll find out right in there, you know, that's yeah. how that's part of the business. So, speaking of the business, and you know, like, I want to know, like, what do you when you go for auditioning, what do you enjoy more? Do you enjoy the self tape? Or do you like to go in front of people? Um, um, I miss being in front of people. 
I would say. I like the self tape in the sense I get to control it a little more. Yeah. But ultimately, my my best stuff happens in a room with more than one person. Like the I'm, and again, I think that comes from the theater background. Yeah. Because when I feel like there's something very detached and weird when you're just in a in front of a, a camera by yourself, just reading with a reader. There's it's it's uh, it's its own type of thing. It's not like acting like on a show. Or it's not like anything else we do. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's its own unique thing that doesn't really match what we're doing on the set. That's why I don't know. If, I don't think it's the best medium personally to get to find the best actor, but it's what we have, and I get why we're doing it. It's more convenient, but I I don't know. I think a lot of amazing actors slip through the cracks because that just doesn't capture it. It, it you're not getting who you're not getting the essence uh, like somebody who's in the room and you can feel them walk in the room do you know what i mean yeah that yeah. that's a different kind of energy than when you're just looking at them on a like on a on a on your laptop <laughs> yeah it's true like like i said i've had past guests where they're like they want the live interaction because sometimes you know they'll read really good but then you know one of the people be in the room would be like could you just play a little bit this way and do it again? And they just, that was it. That's all they needed. And they got the part. Yeah, no, exactly. That's a very good point, right? You get adjustments. Sometimes it's just like a little inkling. That's all you need as an actor to go. The other thing I noticed when I was on Unforgettable, I always say, um, actually, this is the first time I'm telling this story. When I was working on Unforgettable and there was a CBS show in New York, the I learned something because I would be seeing the producers looking at self tapes in the little like whatever break room yeah. while we were shooting, the producers would be looking. And what I noticed, I just would always peek out and like watch them watching the actors. And I noticed that how fast they go through it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're looking at them because the volume is more, they're getting a lot more tape. So they're going through them faster. So they're just basically like almost practically and fast forward going through all of it. And I'm not saying everybody does it this way, but I did notice they did it this way, like, you know, several times. And, and it just made me realize, oh, wow, you know, you have to capture them yeah. right away. Yeah. It's not the same. It just has a different, you have to learn how to work yeah. and some, that kind of uh, self tape. Yeah. Yeah. And I've learned, like, you know, like sometimes, like, self tapes, like, they might not even watch you because they might see something they like and, like, you know what? We're going to go with them. We're done watching tapes. Exactly. Exactly. They'll stop. I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, you don't feel like looking through another hundred tapes when you've already found the perfect person. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so um, do you have like a dream role you want to play someday? Um, I have a few dream roles. Um, I don't have a particular like person, but I have a particular show idea that I want to, you know, of a yeah. woman I want to, um, that I want to play. I want to play a woman in charge. And um, I have some ideas my husband and I produce. So we're writing the ideas of what we want to play. I just kind of feel like waiting for somebody to write it for me or for the role to come along. Not really my style. I like to, we're definitely trying to, trying to um, make it happen for ourselves. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, where do you uh -huh. where do you see yourself 10 20 years from now um 10 20 years from now whoa let's see i am hopefully still doing this still rocking it there you go. um I, right you know i i do i think i'll still be doing that my you know my kids will be grown by then um i'll probably be enjoying their careers i don't know they're all getting drawn to this so we'll see what happens with that oh, but boy. I think I think then I want to be I want to be doing some more um, some more stuff like maybe writing, producing more. I, I think that's I think that's the direction it's going to go in. It's going to go into projects yeah. and being behind the scenes maybe a little bit more directing. Maybe I'll try directing. I, I was I, I want to tour with all that stuff. I want to write and direct and just be more of a creator as well yeah. and still act but do all of it. That's good. I mean, like I said, a lot of people do that these days. They like they want to get involved with a little bit of everything, and sometimes they just start making their own projects. Like you said, you could be making your own projects 10, 20 years from now. Exactly. You have to, right? You can't, you have to nowadays. There's so much content. That's right. And there's so much happening. In order for you to say, you have to kind of, you have to hustle it. You have to go after it because 
it's just not like it used to be, you know, you, I, I don't, or I don't know if it was ever like this. You can't like just sit around waiting for the phone to ring. Really. You have to like, you have to make it happen and create the stories that you want to see. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Any uh, other, mm-hmm. up, any other upcoming projects that are coming out for you in the next few months that you can share? Um, we are working on a, a gritty horror flick called the locksmith that is, that was shot in the backwoods of Georgia and um, we're just waiting for all of the, you know, what's going to happen. We're in post-production, so we're waiting what the next lockdown orders are to figure out when we want to release it. So it's an indie project, so we have a little more freedom when, you know, when we want to do that and when we want to start start that process. But it, everything's kind of on hold right now. Yeah. So, and then I just find out about Bosch, and then Bosch, depending on if they're going to go ahead with the regular shooting schedule, I think. California just announced that we're going to, I think, July. I think they just announced that. So I don't know. It's crazy, right? It's all up in the air. Yeah, we don't know what's, what's going to happen. Daya, lastly, yeah. how can the listeners find you on uh, social media? I am you can, Daya Vadia on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. It's D A Y A V A I D Y A at Daya Vadia. All right, Daya, this was fun. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, everybody. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening to the Man Cave Chronicles podcast. I finally get my man cave. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the MCC Podcast. And our website, themccpodcast.com. Until next time. Until next time.